Hello student, this is our fourth lecture. In this lecture, we shall discuss about wind and geothermal energy. There are four parts in this lecture. In the first part, we shall discuss about components of wind turbine. The contents in this lecture are components of wind turbine, materials for wind turbine blades, types of wind turbines, wind farms, relative merits of wind energy and geothermal energy. Wind is the flow of gases on a large scale. On the surface of the earth, wind consists of the bulk movement of air. Wind energy is a form of solar energy. Wind energy or wind power describes the process by which wind is used to generate electricity. Wind turbines convert the kinetic energy in the wind into mechanical power. This mechanical power can also be utilized directly for a specific task such as pumping water. Wind power or wind energy is the use of wind to provide the mechanical power through wind turbines to turn electric generators and traditionally to do other work like milling of grains or pumping water. Wind power is a sustainable and renewable energy and has a much smaller impact on the environment compared to burning of fossil fuels which produces greenhouse gases. A wind turbine is also known as a wind energy converter. It is a device that converts the wind's kinetic energy into mechanical energy and the mechanical energy is finally converted into electrical energy. Here in the picture is presented the main components of a basic wind turbine. These components are foundation, connection to the electrical grid, tower, access ladder which is inside the tower, wind orientation or yaw control, nacelle, generator, anemometer, electric or mechanical brake, gearbox, rotor blade, blade pitch control and rotor hub. We shall see the function of each and every component one by one in detail. Wind turbines by their nature are very tall and slender structures. This can cause a number of issues when the structural design of the foundations are taken into consideration. The foundations of a conventional engineering structure for a wind turbine are designed mainly to transfer the vertical load, which is the dead weight, to the ground and this generally allows for a comparatively unsophisticated arrangement to be used. However, in the case of wind turbines, the force of the wind's interaction with the rotor at the top of the tower creates a strong tendency to tip the wind turbine over. This loading regime causes large moment loads to be applied to the foundations of a wind turbine. As a result, considerable attention needs to be given when designing the footings, that is foundation, to ensure that the foundation will resist this tipping tendency. One of the most common foundations for offshore wind turbines is monopile, a single large diameter 4 to 6 meters tubular steel pile driven to a depth of 5 to 6 times the diameter of the pile into the seabed. The cohesion of the soil and friction between the pile and the soil provide the necessary structural support for the wind turbine. On the other hand, in onshore turbines, the most common type of foundation is a gravity foundation.
which we can see here in the picture. Here, a large mass of concrete is spread out over a large area to used to resist the turbine loads. Wind turbine size and type, wind conditions and soil conditions at the site are the determining factors in the design of the foundation. The second important component of a wind turbine is the connection to the electrical grid. Variable speed wind turbines can produce more power than the current wind conditions can support. By storing some wind energy as kinetic energy and the latter is converted into electrical energy. All grid connected wind turbines from the first one in 1939 until the development of variable speed grid connected wind turbines developed during 1970s were fixed speed wind turbines. As of recently, during the year 2003, nearly all grid-connected wind turbines are now operated at exactly constant speed, also known as synchronous generators, or within a few percent of constant speed, also known as induction generators. As of the year, in 2011, many operational wind turbines used fixed speed induction generators. Most of the new grid connected wind turbines are variable speed wind turbines. They are in some variable speed configuration. The generator in a wind turbine produces alternating current electricity. Some turbines drive an AC or AC converter, which converts the alternating current to direct current with a rectifier and then back to alternating current using an inverter in order to match the frequency and phase of the grid. However, the most common method in large modern turbines is to instead use a doubly fed induction generator generally connected to a electricity grid. The next important component of the wind turbine we are going to discuss is the tower material. Currently, the majority of wind turbines are supported by conical tubular steel towers. These towers represent 30 to 65 percent of the turbine weight and therefore account for a larger percentage of the turbine transportation costs. The use of lighter materials in the tower could greatly reduce this cost and construction cost of the wind turbine as a whole. However, the stability is a large concern. Higher grade as 500 steel costs 20 to 25% more than the S335 steel. These steels are the standard structural steels usually employed in making tower material. But it requires 30% less material because of its improved strength. Therefore, replacing wind turbine towers with S500 steel would result in net saving both in weight and the cost. But there is some disadvantage of conical steel towers. That is, constructing towers that meet the requirements of wind turbines taller than 90 meters proves challenging. High performance concrete shows potential to increase tower height and increase the lifetime of the towers. A hybrid of pre-stressed concrete and steel has shown improved performance over standard tubular steel at tower heights of 120 meters. Higher the tower height, higher is the performance. Concrete also gives a benefit of allowing for small precast sections to be assembled on site, avoiding the challenges steel faces during transportation. 
one downside of concrete towers is the higher carbon dioxide emissions during concrete production and compared to the steel however the overall environmental benefit should be higher if concrete towers can double the wind turbine lifetime alternately wood is being investigated as a material for wind turbine towers and a 100 meter tall tower supporting a 1.5 megawatt turbine has been erected in germany the wood tower shares the same transportation benefit of the segmented steel shell tower but without the steel resource consumption the next in this list we shall discuss about wind orientation control or yaw control modern large wind turbines are typically actively controlled to face the wind direction measured by a wind vane situated at the back of the nacelle as shown in the picture here we can see the position of the yaw control by minimizing the yaw angle the misalignment between the wind and turbine pointing direction the power output is maximized and non symmetrical loads are minimized however since the wind direction varies quickly the turbine will not strictly follow the direction and will have a small yaw angle on average the power output losses can simply be approximated to fall particularly at low to medium wind speeds yawing can make a significant reduction in the turbine output with wind direction variations of plus and minus 30 degree being quite common and long response times of the turbines to change in wind direction at high wind speeds the wind direction is less variable next in the list of components of wind turbines we are going to discuss is the nacelle a nacelle is a cover housing that houses all of the generating components in a wind turbine including the generator gearbox drive train and brake assembly a notable feature now found on some offshore wind turbines is a large sturdy helicopter hoisting platform built on the top of the nacelle which is capable of supporting service personnel and their tools winch down to the platform from a helicopter hovering over it Wind turbine rotors are stopped, feathered, and locked before the personnel are dropped down to or picked up from the platforms. Here in the picture, you can see a person is standing at the top of the nacelle. For large commercial size horizontal axis wind turbines, the electrical generator is mounted in a nacelle. at the top of the tower behind the hub of the turbine rotor typically wind turbines generate electricity through asynchronous machines that are directly connected with the electricity grid usually the rotational speed of the wind turbine is slower than the equivalent rotation speed of the electrical network typical rotation speeds for wind generators are 5 to 20 rpm while a directly connected machine will have an electrical speed between 750 and 3600 rpm therefore a gearbox is inserted between the rotor hub and the generator this also reduces the generator cost and weight The next component is the anemometer. An anemometer is a device used for measuring wind speed and direction. It is also a common weather station instrument. Here in the picture is shown a small anemometer. The anemometer is 
installed at the top of the new shell. Electrical braking system is a braking system of a small wind turbine that can be done by dumping energy from the generator into a register bank, converting the kinetic energy of the turbine rotation into heat. This method is useful if the kinetic load on the generator is suddenly reduced or it is too small to keep the turbine speed within the allowed limit. Cyclically, braking causes the blades to slow down, which increases the stalling effect, reducing the efficiency of the blades. This way, the turbine's rotation can be kept at a safe speed in faster wind time while maintaining nominal power output. This method is usually not applied on large grid connected wind turbines. On the other hand, a mechanical drum brake or disc brake is used to stop turbine in emergency situations such as extreme gust events or overspeed wind. This brake is a secondary means to hold the turbine at rest for maintenance with a rotor lock system as primary means. Such brakes are usually applied only after blade furling and electromagnetic braking have reduced the turbine speed as the mechanical brakes can create a fire inside the nuchelle if used to stop the turbine from full speed. The load on the turbine increases if the brake is applied at rated RPM. Next in the list is the gearbox. In the picture here, the positioning of the gearbox is shown. In conventional wind turbines, the blades spin a shaft that is connected through a gearbox to the generator. The gearbox converts the turning speed of the blades 15 to 20 rotations per minute for a large 1 megawatt turbine into a faster 1800 revolutions per minute that the generator needs to generate electricity. Analysts from Global Data estimate that gearbox market grows from 3.2 billion in 2006 to 6.9 billion in the year 2011 and to 8.1 billion by 2020. Market leaders were wind energy in 2011. The use of magnetic gearboxes has also been explored as a way of reducing wind turbine maintenance costs. Here in the picture, we can see the different important components housed in a nuchelle. We can see the position of the anemometer high speed shaft, controller, generator, gearbox, low speed shaft, brakes, your drive, your motor that is housed inside the tower, positioning of the blades, rotor and pitch controller. Next topic we shall discuss about the blades. Wind turbines developed over the last 50 years have almost universally used either two or three blades. Aerodynamic efficiency increases with number of blades but with diminishing return. Increasing the number of blades from one to two yields a 6% increase in aerodynamic efficiency. whereas Increasing the blade count from 2 to 3 yields only an additional 3% in efficiency. Further increasing the blade count yields minimal improvement in aerodynamic efficiency and it sacrifices too much in the blade stiffness as the blade becomes thinner. 
The ratio between the speed of the blade tips and the speed of the wind is called tip speed ratio. High efficiency three blade turbines have tip speed wind speed ratios of 6 to 7. Modern wind turbines are designed to spin at varying speeds. Use of aluminum and composite materials in their blades has contributed to low rational inertia, which means that newer wind turbines can accelerate quickly if the wind pick up, keeping the tip speed ratio more nearly constant. Operating closer to their optimal tip speed ratio during energetic gusts of wind allows wind turbines to improve energy capture from sudden gusts that are typical in urban settings. Older style wind turbines were designed to heavier steel blades which have higher inertia and rotated at speeds governed by the AC frequency of the power lines. The high inertia buffered the changes in rotation speed and thus made power output more stable. In simple designs, the blades are directly bolted to the hub called rotor hub and are unable to pitch, which leads to aerodynamic stall over and above certain wind speeds. In other more sophisticated designs, they are bolted to the pitch bearing, which adjusts their angle of attack with the help of a pitch system according to the wind speed to control their rotational speed. The pitch bearing is itself bolted to the hub. The hub is fixed to the rotor shaft which drives the generator directly or through the gearbox. The wind turbine is connected to the grid via an intermediate direct current circuit. The alternating current generated by the generator is first converted into direct current and is then converted back into alternating current with the correct frequency and voltage. This enables variable speed operation of the wind turbine and the mechanical stresses are minimized. Rotating generator converts wind energy to electricity and the transformer increases voltage for transmission to the substation. Substation increases voltage for transmission over long distances and transmission to the grid. Wind turbines are devices that convert the wind's kinetic energy to electrical power. The result over a millennium of windmill development and modern engineering, today's wind turbines are manufactured in a wide range of horizontal axis and vertical axis types. The smallest wind turbines are used for applications such as battery charging for auxiliary power. Slightly larger wind turbines can be used for making a small contribution to the domestic power supply while selling unused power back to the utility supplier via the electrical grid. Arrays of large turbines also known as wind farms have become an increasingly important source of renewable energy in the modern world today and are used in many countries as a part of a strategy to reduce their reliance on fuel fossils. Wind turbine design is the process of defining the form and specification of a wind turbine to exact extraction of energy from the wind. The wind turbine installations consists of the necessary systems needed to capture the wind's energy, point the turbine into the wind, convert mechanical rotation into electrical power, and other systems to start, stop, and control the turbine. Here in the picture, the past and present 
wind turbine dimensions have been shown and there are lot of possibilities for the future research to improve the design and material in a better direction now we shall continue to the part 2 of this lecture